You're about to watch a lesson on how to make up a three-phase panel. We want to point out to you that this panel is de-energized and that this lesson is being filmed in a studio. It is not the purpose of this lesson to teach you how to work on a hot panel. Working on hot panels requires special tools and special techniques. We do want to point out, however, you should always work safely and you should always get in the habit of testing your panel to see if it's hot. That's a good habit to develop so that later on in your career, if you do have the chance to work on a hot panel, you've developed good habits and you've developed safe habits with your work. So now it's time to get started on this video, how to make up a commercial three-phase panel. Once again, welcome to this lesson on how to wire up a three-phase panel. Now the techniques we're going to teach you can be used on remodel work or on brand new construction. So we're going to uh, give you some specifics on each one of those which is going to help you along with your career and your education. Now one thing you're going to find with making up a panel, at least that I found out, is that bigger panels are much easier to make up. It's easier to see the wire, it's easier to form the wire and hold everything. However, a panel this size is really perfect for uh, what we need to be learning and oftentimes, of course, you will be making up panels of this size for, uh, for normal distribution of power and lighting. Uh, one thing we always want you to do is assume that the panel is hot, at least check it, because oftentimes other trades, uh, they like to go in and, and experiment with electrical work and sometimes try and get temporary lighting once you put some things in and landed some circuits. They want to uh, turn those on and, and try to uh, get some lighting that way. So that doesn't happen too often on the job, but just be aware that sometimes people try to do that. So I just want you to always remember to test the panel to see if it's hot. Now, for many of you, when you get a chance to make up a panel, it's the first time you're going to be using multiple groups of knowledge. You've been bending conduit and maybe doing some makeup and trim work. Well, making up a panel, you're going to have to use quite a large number of skills, remember a lot of details, and it's really the first time when you really get to check up on somebody else's work as well because you've got to make sure that the, the wires have been numbered properly and, and that kind of thing. So it's not, something, uh, it's not something that should scare you or you should be afraid of. It is a responsibility, but look forward to it. Look forward to it as something that you're going to learn to do and do well because if you've been uh, watching our other lessons, you've learned how to do some other skills pretty well and you've got a lot of confidence. So now it's time, let's take a look at the panel. So basically we've got a can here, is uh, what it's often called, a, a panel. And uh, it has a, a ground bar over here, we'll be taking a closer look to it a little bit later. It's got some mounting brackets here, where we're gonna be putting the, uh, the guts into the panel, and we're gonna use those. And of course there's knockouts, concentric knockouts sometimes, or sometimes you have to drill your own knockouts in order to uh, put your conduit into the panel. Now on this panel we've got some uh, KO seals put in. A KO seal is a knockout seal. This panel is, uh, it was taken out of a job and uh, so we, we can demonstrate some techniques that you're going to use for remodeling as well. So let's get started with this. So in order to have this panel, we've got the case here, let's go ahead and put the guts in this panel right now. So I just have those right here, and we're just going to take them, and we've got these mounting lugs, these studs that are sticking out the panel, and we simply have some bolts here, or some, some nuts, I should say, we're going to spin those on, and once you get one on there, that's, that's enough to hold it most of the time, and these should spin, these should spin easier, but again, with three models, sometimes the threads could get a little bit uh, messed up, or something could be on get all of these put in here. Again, make sure you've got the, the guts pushed all the way to the back. Okay, so we've got those finger tightened. We're going to tighten them down with a ratchet just a little bit. And again, we don't want to overdo it. Get them too tight, just snug them up a bit. Putting the heads on a on a on an engine, you do it all at 
once, and you alternate a little bit. Okay, good. So now we have the guts in the panel, and it's time now, let's take a little bit closer look at the panel. So we're taking a closer look at the panel now, so it's time to point out a few things. This is a three-phase panel, so we have A phase, B phase in the middle, and C phase. Now that's as you're looking at it, working from left to right. Now we have the ground bar here, we've talked about that. Now we have our neutral bar here and here, and you can see through here these bolts, these sides are connected. So you can bring neutral wires down from this side and connect them here, and on this side of the panel you can connect those neutrals here. Now you can see that the neutral is insulated, the neutral bar I should say is insulated from the panel with this black plastic. That means that this was a sub-panel. It was fed from another panel. Now on the first panel that comes from a transformer, you must bond the neutral to your ground bar. However, if you have a sub-panel, you do not bond that neutral to the ground bar. And if you would do that, it would still work, but it would not be as safe, and it would cause an overloaded breaker to take much longer to trip, which creates a safety hazard. So we'll diagram that and explain more about that for you so you have a better understanding of that.